Hello, bonjour, kia ora. I'm Adrian, it's June 18, and this is AI and VFX News. Today, we've got four really interesting research papers to explore. We start with Biden's Content V. They managed to train a competitive video model with only 256 NPUs in four weeks. Then we look at Meta's Cotracker 3 that can track points for occlusion using real video data. Adobe self-forcing shows us how to make video models stream in real time. And we'll finish with NVIDIA Seabottle, a new approach to climate modeling. Allez, on y va. Let's explore ContentV, a new approach to training video generation models from ByteDance that achieved promising results with limited computational resources. Here's a core problem. Training video AI models has become extremely expensive. Current methods, like Meta's MovieGen, require thousands of GPUs. Look at this. Each brick represents 100 GPUs. MovieGen needs this entire wall of GPUs. ContentV uses just 256 NPUs for four weeks. NPUs, neural processing units, are AI chips similar to GPUs, so this isn't about better hardware. It's about smarter training. We're talking millions of dollars versus a fraction of that. To achieve this, Biden's asked a simple question. What if we could reuse existing image models as a foundation for video model training? ContentV demonstrates this is possible through three key innovations. First, the minimalist architecture. Here is Stable Diffusion 3.5 Large, a proven image generator. It creates beautiful still images, but it's locked in place. Now watch this. They make the smallest possible modification, swapping its 2D VAE, which decodes from latent space to a single image, for a 3D VAE that can handle video sequences. This one change unlocks temporal capability. Same car, now it moves through time. The core machinery stays the same. This reuse dramatically reduces training time from months to weeks. Second, the systematic training strategy. They use flow matching instead of traditional diffusion training, let me show you why this matters for video. Traditional diffusion is like pushing each car separately, tracking many small random steps. Errors compound by the end. Flow matching creates rails, a direct path between noise and final videos that keeps all frames aligned. No drift, no accumulated errors. This makes training more stable and efficient. They also implement progressive curriculum learning. First, learn basic motion with short, low-resolution clips. Then, longer clips with more complexity. And finally, high resolution with full quality. You don't teach someone to build a Ferrari before they can stack blocks. Crucially, they mix in image training throughout to maintain visual quality. Third, the reinforcement learning approach. After initial training, they could hire thousands of human reviewers to rate every video. Instead, they used MPS, an existing AI model that already knows what looks good. It's reinforcement learning from human feedback, but without collecting expensive new human ratings, like having an experienced art critic on staff rather than hiring new ones for every painting. The infrastructure setup is equally pragmatic. Encoding servers prepare the data, while training servers do the learning. Separating this task across different server clusters reduces memory bottlenecks. Imagine if one person had to constantly switch between sorting and building, everything would slow down. The results, their 8 billion parameter model score 85.14 on the bench, matching or exceeding models twice its size. It generates 480p videos at 24 frames per second for 5 second clips. There are some limitations. The paper notes initial challenges with text video misalignment and meeting human aesthetic preferences, which they address through post training. What ContentV really proves is that efficient training methods can democratize video AI development. Look at what we built. Reuse the existing models, create direct paths, learn progressively, separate tasks, use existing expertise. You don't need millions of dollars to build competitive models. By working smarter at every step, they've created a blueprint others can follow. The code and models are open source under Apache 2, the component from Stable Diffusion return Stability's AI's license. Let's move to some tracking magic. Last time, we covered ATI, Any Trajectory Instruction, Python's framework that lets you draw trajectories on images to control video motion. But as some of you pointed out, it was quite tedious to manually create all the curves, deal with static points, and so on. This is where automatic point tracking comes in. CoTracker, originally released by Meta two years ago, is a transformer-based model that tracks any pixel through a video. 
Think of these dots as the pixels we want to track. Now here's the key difference. Traditional trackers follow points independently. When tracking independently, each dot can get confused. The hand might be mistaken by the foot when they look similar from certain angles. Cotracker takes a different approach. It tracks multiple points jointly. Because it knows these points belong to the same objects and understands their special relationships, the head stays above the body, hands remain at shoulder level. It maintains correct tracking, even when individual points might look ambiguous. This joint tracking approach becomes especially powerful for handling occlusions. When you're tracking points on a moving character and part of it disappears behind something, the model can predict where the hidden points should be, based on the visible ones. After all, the geometry of a body doesn't change just because part of it is hidden. Now, Cotracker 3, released in October last year, solves a fundamental problem with point trackers. These models were often trained on synthetic data, but then used on real videos. Synthetic data from 3D renderers give you perfect pixel annotation automatically, but it lacks motion blur, compression artifacts, complex lighting, and all the messiness of real footage. This cap meant trackers would perform well during training, but often fail on actual videos. The breakthrough is training on real videos, but here's a challenge. Manually annotating thousands of real videos is nearly impossible, so the team developed a clever pseudo-labeling approach. They take multiple existing trackers, think of them as expert teachers, Tapir, Cotracker, and two versions of Cotracker 3. Each one watches the same video and tries to track the same point. Each teacher predicts where the point should go. The student learns by watching all these predictions. Where most teachers agree, that's probably correct. When teachers disagree, the student doesn't just pick one or average them. Instead, it learns patterns from thousands of examples to make its own decision. Sometimes it follows the majority. Sometimes it finds a better path, none of them so. The key is that through training on many videos, the student learns when to trust which teacher and when to forge its own path. By training on real footage this way, Cotracker 3 handles motion blur, occlusion, and all the complexities of actual videos far better than any model trained on synthetic data. The model comes in two versions, online and offline. The online version processes video sequentially by sliding windows, perfect for real-time on infinite streams. The offline version analyzes entire videos at once, excelling at tracking through long occlusion by understanding the complete motion context. What's remarkable is the efficiency. Previous state-of-the-art bootstrap here needed 15 million real videos for training. Cotracker 3 achieves better results with just 15,000 videos. That's 1,000 times less data. They also simplified the architecture by removing components like global matching. Let me show you why this matters. When a tracked point disappears, global matching searches for it like this. It scans the entire video for patches that look similar. The problem? A red shirt might match a red car, a red flower, or any red object. This causes erratic jumping between similar-looking but completely wrong locations. Cotracker 3 uses 4D correlations instead. Here's what that means. Rather than searching everywhere, it examines small neighborhoods across both space and time. It asks, where was this point one frame ago, two frame ago? And based on this motion pattern, where is it likely to go next? This maintains smooth, consistent motion even through occlusions, because it understands the trajectory, not just the appearance. This simpler approach is not only faster, but more accurate because it maintains temporal consistency rather than jumping around based on visual similarity alone. The results speak for themselves. On occluded points, where previous trackers struggle, Cotracker 3 achieves 42% accuracy, compared to Bootstrap here's 28%. It can track up to 70,000 points simultaneously on a single GPU, enabling capture of complex motion pattern across an entire video frame. The code is released under a CC by NC license, meaning it's free for research and personal use, but commercial applications need separate licensing. Some components use MIT or Apache license. For Config UI, there is already a code record node that outputs tracking data in the exact format ATI expects. Instead of manually drawing trajectories, you can use code tracker to automatically track any video and feed those tracks directly to ATI for motion control generation. We released a deep dive tutorial on this a few days ago, so go check it out. Let's explore self-forcing, a new approach to autoregressive video diffusion released last week by Adobe Research and UT Austin. Unlike most video diffusion models that generate all frames simultaneously with bidirectional attention, where all frames can see each other, 
autoregressive models create frames sequentially. Each frame can only see what came before. Frame 3 sees 1 and 2, but not 4 and 5. This sequential nature enables real-time streaming but historically came with quality trade-off due to error accumulation. Self-forcing bridges this gap. It achieves the speed of autoregressive generation while matching the quality of bidirectional models. How? By fundamentally rethinking how these models are trained. The team released both a trained model you can use right now and a training framework. They take one 2.1, 1.3 billion parameter text-to-video model, which normally uses bidirectional attention, and converts it to autoregressive generation by adding causal attention masking. Causal attention is this wall. It blocks frames from seeing the future, creating a one-way view where frames can only look backward. The core problem they tackle is exposure bias. During training, standard model learns by looking at perfect reference frame. It's easy, just copy exactly what you see. But when actually generating videos, they must work with their own outputs, which aren't perfect. Watch how this tiny misalignment becomes a major problem. This mismatch causes errors to snowball as the video progresses. Self-forcing solution is clever. During training, instead of using perfect frames as reference, the model generates each frame based on its own previous outputs, exactly like it will do when you use it. This teaches the model to handle its own imperfections. The key innovation is bringing key-value caching to the training process. Let me show you why this matters. In Transformers, when you generate frame by frame, you don't want to recompute everything from scratch. Key-value caching stores the processed information from previous frames. Smart. Keep what you built and just add new pieces. But here's a problem. Traditional models train without caching. They practice the slow way. Self-forcing trains with caching. They practice the fast way. If you practice building slowly, you can't suddenly build fast. Self-forcing practices exactly how it performs. The caching and causal attention work together seamlessly. The key-value cache stores previous frame information, while causal attention ensures the model access them in the right order. Together, they enable a true sequential generation. They even implement a rolling cache system. Memory is full, only room for 5 blocks. To add block 6, remove block 1 and shift everything. Like a conveyor belt, new frames enter, old frames exit. This allows infinitely long video generation without memory explosion. Here's what's fascinating. The training doesn't require any video data. They start with 1.2.1, which already knows how to generate video using bidirectional attention. Self-forcing first converts it to use causal attention, making it autoregressive. They initialize with ODA-based checkpoints, then fine-tune this modified model using only text prompt. The model uses only four steps for diffusion. It generates video from these prompts and learns by matching the distribution of its outputs to what good videos should look like. It's essentially teaching the model to critique and improve its own work. The entire training takes just two hours on 64H100 GPUs, which is remarkably efficient. For practical use, you can generate 480p videos at 10fps in an NVIDIA RTX 4090 with 24 gigs of VRAM. The code and checkpoints are available on GitHub and Hanging Face under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 license. This means it's free for research and personal use, but commercial applications require a separate license. For Confi UI integration, true self-hosting would require implementing causal attention and the rolling key-value cache system, which doesn't exist in Confi UI yet. The model checkpoints appearing now use self-hosting's distribution matching technique, but still use bidirectional attention for inference. This will work with normal config UI workflow, but will miss the real-time streaming capabilities that make self-forcing so special. Hopefully, this work will inspire other researchers to push further with speed and architecture improvements. We are only scratching the surface of what's possible here. To finish, let's forget about Pixel for a moment, to explore how AI is helping us understand our planet. Climate in a Bottle, or C-Bottle, is a new generative AI foundation model from NVIDIA released last month that simulates Earth's climate at kilometer scale resolution. Climate scientists are running in data. Modern climate simulations generate petabytes of information, but actually working with datasets this massive is nearly impossible. Even downloading them takes forever, and analyzing them requires computational resources most researchers don't have. C-Bottles offer a radically different approach. Instead of sorting massive data set, it compresses decades of climate patterns into a neural network weighing just a few gigabytes. 
Think of it as distilling an entire climate model into something that fits on your laptop. What makes Cibotol unique is its use of generative diffusion models, rather than the autoregressive approaches used by most AI weather emulators. Let me show you the difference. Traditional methods predict the atmosphere step by step through time. Our 1 looks perfect, our 2 bases its prediction on our 1, picking up any small errors. By hour 5, those tiny errors have compounded into major problems. Diffusion models work differently. They generate all time steps directly from your input conditions, no accumulating errors, because each prediction is independent. The system works in two stages. First, a globally trained coarse resolution image generator produces 100 km fields. It takes just three inputs, time of day, day of year, and monthly sea surface temperatures. From these simple conditions, it generates 45 different atmospheric variables. The system first generates a coarse view. This is like looking at Earth from very far away. A second stage provides 16x super-resolution enhancements, sharpening the output to 5 km fields. This locally trained model processes small overlapping sections of the globe separately and stitches them together, like assembling a high-resolution photo from smaller tiles. Two stages, coarse view, then fine details. What's remarkable is the compression. Each generated sample achieves a 3000 to 1 compression ratio. All this data compressed into just the information needed to recreate it. That means generating 600 megabytes of realistic climate data from just 200 kilobytes of input conditions. The model shows impressive climate realism. It correctly generates seasonal ice cycles, produces tropical cyclones in the right locations, and captures large-scale patterns like El Nino. Because it learns from two different data sources, real weather observations and computer simulations, it can transfer knowledge between them. For instance, it has high-resolution cloud texture learned from simulations to enhance coarse observational data. The model can borrow details from one data set to enhance another, like learning a technique from one teacher and applying it elsewhere. It can also fill in missing data channels and correct non-error in existing data sets. There are some limitations. The model currently misses surface temperature warming trends, so it captures upper atmosphere patterns correctly. Each generation time step is independent, so you can't track specific weather systems evolving over time. Despite the limitations, this represents a paradigm shift in climate data access. The old way store everything. Instead of downloading and storing petabytes, researchers could generate the specific atmospheric condition they need on demand. Scientists specify condition, AI generates the climate data. The code is on GitHub, and models are on NVIDIA's NGC's catalog for research use. For climate scientists struggling with massive datasets, Seabottle offers a glimpse of how generative AI might transform their field. The bottleneck shifts from sourcing, storing, and processing data to generating climate scenarios and validating them. That's it for today's episode. All the links are in the description below. If you learned something new today, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or if you're experimenting with any of these techniques, drop a comment. I always enjoy seeing what you're creating. I will see you in a couple of days for another episode of AI and VFX. Thank you for watching.